happy Saturday. So today I am here with Mr. Nicholas Qualick. He is the weekend anchor here at KFDX, and he's also the weekday reporter. So, Nick. And host of Text Almost Politics yes, Now. Yes, and the host of Text Almost Politics <laughs> Now. So, Nick, tell us a little bit about yourself. When did you start in the broadcast industry? Boy, that seems like so long ago. But uh, started back in, on the air, at least back in 2014 in the summertime, a little show called Fox in the Morning in Rochester, Minnesota. Okay. So that was with uh, Fox and uh, Fox Affiliate. Okay. I was there for two and a half years. Um, then I came back home. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio originally. Okay. And uh, I taught at the school I graduated from. Uh, for about a year and then I got a call in fall of September 2017 asking if like I like to if I was interested and I came down here got here in October of 2017 mm -hmm. and two years next month Wow congratulations Thank you. Thank you're you. welcome so I know your your time is I know you didn't want to discuss this but your time is almost up here at mm -hmm. KFDX so what is there something that you what is there one thing that struck out to you in terms of what you've learned so far or something that you think you will take with you um, just the different experiences as far as what I've learned um, you know only st still being new to this business you know you think you learn a lot in your first job well you keep learning more if you stop learning in my opinion you stop living um, so learning more about politics obviously because I had never hosted a political show before mm -hmm. um, kind of running things more or less on the weekend because you know so single anchor show you know for a while there I was producing as well so just learning how to balance all that out how to deal with different personalities because not everyone has the same type of personality the same not everyone is used to being managed you're, you know you're a certain way exactly. and mentored so just learning how to kind of do the delicate dance of just being able to learn how to work with different personality types Okay, so with that being said, when you were in school, did you know that you wanted to be in the, in the no. broadcast industry? No, what were no. you studying I was, originally? I was a music major. Oh, okay. Uh, for for a few years, and then I left school. Uh, and long story short, uh, I thought back to my college days, and I was the public address announcer for the Kent State University Marching Bold and Flashes. And so, when in my retail career, I call it career. Uh, I decided that probably wasn't for me, so then I thought back to what else could I do, and I thought, well, I did some public broadcasting, and so went took some classes, and uh, eight months later, I was headed up to Rochester, Minnesota. Wow. Now, I remember you saying that you were a part of a band. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that that sort of helped, you know, guide you into the sure. career that you're in today? Sure. So, as a music major, um, I studied conducting, okay. and... Um, one of the things you learn when you're conducting is how to again you know you've got a hundred or so people sitting before you and when you have a piece of music before you you have to convince the people that you know more about them and you should know more about them about that piece than they do mm -hmm. so the object though is to get them to do what you want and to all together collectively try to obey the composer's wishes right. and so again that's all about learning how to get people to respond to what they see, what you're, you know, not only physically, but also what they see visually as far as what your vision is. So as that young conductor, mm -hmm. you get up there and knowing that this is, there's a lot of history sitting before you, so how am I going to get my message across? Right. And, but I think on that, on that side too, you, you, you bring your experience and maybe a fresh approach to something, so even, even though you might have these these veterans that have been doing this for longer than that person's probably been alive, mm -hmm. the fresh approach can sometimes help say, oh, well, we've never done it like that way, which can break that whole idea of, well, this is the way we've done it, it's successful, and, but you know, sometimes it takes a little bit of a shock to the system to kind of change things up, and for the better. Wow, that's really amazing. Well, you did mm -hmm. teach a, a broadcast course. Mm -hmm. So for those of us, you know, young aspiring journalists out there, what is something that a piece of advice that you would like to pass on to to those of us who are up and coming and wanting to break into the industry watch the news um, I say that because again going back to the music mm -hmm. I I went to school with people that I said what is your favorite piece of classical music I don't listen to classical music uh, I'm sorry but how how can you possibly teach something you have absolutely no interest or knowledge in mm -hmm. I mean you know if you're going to teach someone about 
the benefits of listening to classical music, going to a concert, how can that, to me, that's hypocritical. I mean, you know, not to say that you have to know every single piece of music by Mozart or Beethoven or Bach or whatever, but a couple pieces that, or at least know something about them that you can convey the interest. Right. So if you never, if you never watch a single newscast or say, oh, I'm not interested in politics or mm -hmm. I'm not interested in what goes on across the sea. Now, I don't know everything about day-to-day -day events of what goes on in mm -hmm. Iran or things like that, but you have to kind of be knowledgeable, mm -hmm. you know. Um, same thing with weather. I mean, I'm a, you know, I generally cover just the news, but, mm -hmm. you know, and meteorologists, they have their, and just like sports, but you should know enough to have, be able to, to, to hold a conversation right. on a newscast. So, but if you don't know, if you, if you don't look at the different styles of the, you know, the major networks, mm -hmm. uh, watch some cable news, mm -hmm. Or if you watch just one station, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whether it be, you know, what other, whatever alphabet soup you want to use, um, you have to invest yourself into saying, okay, this is what I see, and, and figure out why do I like what they're doing or why don't I like. And if you don't know, ask. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you, again, if you watch a certain network here, and a certain artwork there, mm -hmm. you know, change it up. I mean, obviously we don't have a lot of time, especially on our side of the, what we do is to sit down at five o'clock because we have our own newscast. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sit down and, or t and, and, and DVR or, or record to your streaming device and mm -hmm. take that time and say, okay, what do I like about this? And, you know, and watch the competition too. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know what's out there. I mean, you would, you would think like, why would I want to do that? Because, you know, my competition, you might think it's inferior, but no, sometimes they might be doing something that's as good as, or if uh, better than you are, mm -hmm. but you, you don't know. So you have to, you have to, ex you have to, um, you have to be outside your bubble sometimes mm -hmm. so that you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Well, that, that just sounds like to me, it sounds like, like you said, you have to dig outside the box, yeah. and, and it's okay to look at your competition, and, yeah. you know, that's something that I just started doing myself, mm -hmm. and so it, it just helps mold and shape you into, you know, a, a, a good journalist, a right. growing journalist. Right. I mean, I mean, you know, anchors that are older than you and I are, I mean, mm -hmm. they can remember who Walter Cronkite is, and Peter Jennings, and Tom Brokaw, mm -hmm. um, and you don't, I don't want to say steal, but there's, you know, everybody... Every news anchor and every reporter, whether they're gonna, whether they want to uh, admit it or not, in my opinion, takes a little, a little chunk of something they like from each person they see, mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully you would have someone wherever you wind up as, uh, wind up at as a, at a station that would say, okay, I think I know what you're trying to do there. It doesn't really work for you. Be, they're gonna say be yourself mm -hmm. because you know whether <laughs> we want to admit it or not. We're somehow like our parents, the way we act. Yeah. So, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. it may not be a good thing either, but we're all made up of our life experiences. Mm -hmm. And just like what you're gonna do, mm -hmm. that comes with you. So it's hard to, you know, old habits die hard, but some of those habits might be good. Hmm. All right, well, Nicholas, well, thank you so much Certainly. for allowing me to interview you. Sure. And so just really quickly for everyone out there, where are you going to, where are you headed to next? Uh, I'm going to Bismarck, North Dakota. This is going to be my last week here at KFDX and KJTL, for that matter. And it's going to be my last, as we said earlier, my last technical politics now. So uh, not leaving, uh, the bad, that, that's the bad news, I guess. The good news is I'm sticking with the Next Star family. I'm going up to, <laughs> going up to the, uh, uh, as I said, Bismarck, the Minot Bismarck CBS affiliate as their co-anchor. Um, so, and Lauren Culver is going to be my co-anchor. She's been there for for several years now, and she does a great job, and they have a tremendous staff, so I can't wait to get up there. But again, I'll miss everybody here in Texas, all our viewers, our staff, and uh, everybody there I've out, I've, I've, out, I've met out there in the, on the streets of Texas. So. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you again. Thank you Certainly. for being an amazing role model. Thank you. You were always very helpful with asking questions, and I'll still be reaching out to you because I'm still learning. Sure. <laughs> and I'll still be growing, but I, I do want to thank you for allowing me to to interview you, Nicholas. And so thank you guys out there for watching, and I'll see you next time. Look at the uh, story in the chat.